Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of our Guan Yu's Last Dance lore series as we continue with episode 6, titled The Turn. Now previously we discussed the motivations behind Cao Cao and Sun Quan's alliance against Guan Yu as Cao Cao grew desperate after Yu Jin's shocking surrender following the flooding of the Seven Armies. And for Sun Quan, after years of failing to expand on the Eastern Front against the stronghold of Hefei, Taking the Jin province became his main focus under the guidance of General Lu Meng, especially with the relationship souring between him and his former ally Liu Bei. So now with this new alliance set, Guan Yu is about to face a two-front counterattack that he simply could not handle as he was also busy trying to besiege the twin city of Fan and Xiangyang. And first from the north, Xu Huang's army of fresh recruits had already mobilized from Van to press down on Guan Yu. In response, Guan Yu had sent 5,000 troops to garrison at the city of Yan. At first, Xu Huang merely postured there as he awaited for more reinforcements from Cao Cao. And after General Xu Shang and Lu Jian arrived with more reinforcements, Xu Huang ordered his troops to start digging trenches around the city of Yan to start their siege on Guan Yu's forces there. Now, greatly outnumbered, Guan Yu's forces in the city of Yan worried that once the trenches outside was complete, they would be trapped behind enemy lines. So even before Xu Huang would launch any official siege attempts, they promptly abandoned the city of Yan to flee south to regroup with Guan Yu's main force, who was still busy sieging the city of Fan. While this move helped preserve Guan Yu's forces, it also left the northern flank vacant as Xu Huang quickly moved his forces into Yan as he continued to press his encampment up to Guan Yu's siege outside of Fan until the two forces were literally within 10 meters of each other. Yet despite their close proximity, fighting did not break out right away as Guan Yu could not initiate the attack since he was essentially the one under siege now, with Cao Ren inside the city of Fan to his south and Xu Huang in an encampment to his north. The only thing Guan Yu could count on is his own encampment, as his forces had constructed this 10-tier walled encampment with 10 layers of walls. And at the same time, Xu Huang was also in no hurry to attack, because he also knew more reinforcements were on their way, as generals Yin Shu and Zhu Gai were on their way with 12 more battalions where Zhang Liao was also fast approaching from the east as he had been ordered to march out from Hefei. Now a full battalion during the Han Dynasty should be 5,000 troops, but units were rarely at full recruit during the Three Kingdoms period, and even taking a 50% haircut is fairly reasonable for this period. So if we look at a 2,500 unit battalion, this last reinforcement amounted to at least 30,000 troops, which already matches Guan Yu's initial force at the start of the campaign. And even though Guan Yu did end up pulling more units from his rear guard following Lu Xun's appointment in the south, there were obviously going to be some casualties from the fighting, and it is safe to say that Guan Yu was heavily outnumbered at this point. And to make matters worse, under the advice of Dong Zhao, who had became Cao Cao's chief advisor during this period, Cao Cao purposely made copies of Sun Quan's letters and had them shot into both the city of Fan to help rally the morale of Cao Ren's men and into Guan Yu's encampment to strike fear into Guan Yu's forces. Now Sun Quan clearly had asked Cao Cao to keep these letters a secret as they contained plans of their attack on Guan Yu from the rear. But exposing the letters in this manner clearly benefited Cao Cao. And with the intel of Sun Quan's betrayal, Guan Yu is truly stuck between a rock and a hard place now, as any attempts at retreating back to Jiangling would no doubt lead to heavy casualties from the relentless pursuit of now the combined forces of Xu Huang and Cao Ren. But if he chooses to remain a fan, then he risked losing his base of operation to the sneak attack by Sun Quan, which would also doom him for sure. But before Guan Yu could come to a decision, 
Xu Huang would receive his next wave of reinforcement and start launching his attack on Guan Yu's positions around the city of Fan to break the siege. And with his forces outside of the encampment facing a certain doom, Guan Yu decided to march out with 5,000 troops to face off directly with Xu Huang. Now the two generals had a great relationship thanks to the fact that they shared the same hometown, which the two bonded over during Guan Yu's brief service under Cao Cao. So at first, the two generals broke the tension of the battlefield as they chatted over their shared past. But soon, Xu Huang would break the facade as he would end up offering 500 kilos of gold as a reward to the man who would bring back Guan Yu's head. A bit shocked to hear this after the pleasantries, Guan Yu scolded at Xu Huang, only for Xu Huang to reply that this was a matter of state and that he will be all business going forward as the two sides finally started to fight. Yet, with probably a 10 to 1 numbers advantage, the battle was no contest as Xu Huang's forces simply overpowered Guan Yu's men as Guan Yu was forced to flee back into his encampment. Not giving Guan Yu a chance to turtle up inside his 10-layer defense, Xu Huang ordered his troops to give chase as they managed to follow Guan Yu's retreating forces into the encampment itself before the outer gates could be shut. And what followed was a massacre as Guan Yu's land forces were decimated with both the surrendered administrator Fu Fang and the prefect Hu Xiu killed in the fighting as Guan Yu and his remaining troops fought their way to the Han River where his navy fortunately still controlled the waterways. And retreating onto his ship, Guan Yu decided to end the siege of Fan and Xiangyang as he turned his broken force south to race back to Jiangling, hoping to at least stop Sun Quan's sneak attack. Now before we move on to Sun Quan's attack on Guan Yu's rear, I would like to mention that Xu Huang's victory over Guan Yu's encampment outside of Fan was just as astonishing as Guan Yu's victory over Yu Jin which ended up giving us the Chinese idiom Shui Yan Qi Jun, or the flooding of the seven armies, while Xu Huang's speedy pursuit of Guan Yu's shattered forces into his encampment to decimate a fortified position from the inside ended up giving us the Chinese idiom Chang Chu Zhi Ru, which means to drive straight at a target. And this is the reason why Xu Huang's character in Total War Three Kingdoms has a speed up ability in game. Now, while all this was happening outside of Fan, Sun Quan was already launching his attack. In October of 219, just as Guan Yu was starting his siege on Fan following his victory over Yu Jin, Guan Yu's army started to suffer supply issues. Although it was never documented why supplies were struggling to reach the front lines, Guan Yu placed the blame squarely on Mi Fang and Shi Ren, who he had left behind in charge of providing logistics for the campaign. While fearing Guan Yu's punishment upon his return will certainly become one key reason for these two's eventual surrender to Wu, the more direct result of their failure to provide enough supplies to Guan Yu is Guan Yu's decision to seize supplies from a nearby Wu gate pass in order to feed his armies. And using this as an official Kaza belly, Sun Quan would order Lu Meng to lead their attack on Guan Yu. Now, if there are still any Sun Quan apologists out there trying to rationalize this attack as not a backstab, then please explain why Lu Meng's plan of attack involved disguising the entire Wu navy as merchant ships with officers all dressed in white, which was a common color for merchants back in those days, while the troops hid below deck pretending to be trade goods. And to farther sell the disguise, all the deckhands were hired civilians, as these fake merchant ship fooled Guan Yu's checkpoints, as they would sail on without any resistance directly into the merchant docks of city of Gongwan and Jiangling. And with this, we're going to be ending our episode here, as we'll come back next time to close our series with Guan Yu's fall, where we will discuss his capture, and the immediate aftermath of his death as well. So hopefully you all enjoy this episode, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!